Back to our breaking news. A judge has just ruled Nathaniel Veltman did commit an act of terrorism when he killed four members of a Muslim family. Joining us to discuss this further is Ari Goldkind, our legal analyst. Uh, Ari, welcome back. And uh, it's what was expected. Uh, is there anything, have you had a chance to take a look yet at what the judge has been saying? No, but as I said in the nine o'clock hour, Roger, when you and I were speaking, this is the easiest decision of her honor's life. And again, I know a lot of Canadians, when you look at a Supreme Court decision, you look at a court decision, it looks like legalese. It's mm -hmm. hard to decipher. This is a section of the criminal code that is extraordinarily easy to understand, 83.01. And what it basically says is if you commit an act like this for the purpose of a religion, a religious political, or ideological purpose. And this is the key. Even if you do it in part, forget in whole, the section makes clear in part, and you commit a murder for the purposes that I just outlined, that becomes first-degree murder. Now, remember, in Canada, juries don't tell us why they come to a verdict. So it could have been planned and deliberate murder. And or, remember, and or terrorism. So this was not only, in my view, a very easy jury decision of planned and deliberate murder. Just listen to Veltman's own planning and deliberation mm -hmm. for the days and weeks prior to it. But it was also committed in his own words. And this is the key to it, which is why it's such a grotesque act that he did and why it's so sad that the judge couldn't impose the sentence that she may have otherwise imposed prior to the Supreme Court decision in the Moss Killer Bissonette is that he chose the family, the Afzali family, simply because of the way they were dressed. He believed in his mind they were Muslim, and he mowed them down and killed them and took that lovely family that we're looking at right now off the earth for no other reason but a religious, political, and ideological purpose. So I know Canadians are supposed to think court's really hard and complicated. This was not a difficult or complicated job for her honor today, nor was it for a jury that came back in very quick fashion and said, this man is as guilty as guilty can be. Now, now the thing is, uh, he can get, he's 25 years before he can apply for parole. This, the terrorism doesn't, ruling doesn't change the 25 years, but it does change how he'll be looked at when he applies for parole. Is it not the case? And that's exactly, Roger, the issue that I think is the key issue that has escaped the scrutiny of Canadians. So just to give a little history, in 2014, Roger, Stephen Harper mm -hmm. said, look, if you kill two or three people, you kill 10 children, you're a serial killer, you're a murderer of women, every life you take can, this is the key, can be stacked or calculated so that you don't get to apply for parole for every life taken. So if you take three lives, a judge can say you don't get to apply for parole for 75 years. To Justin Trudeau's credit, Roger, he never tried to wipe that out. He's tried to take away a lot of Harper's other mandatory minimums and other things, but he never got in the way of that. In 2022, the Supreme Court came along, and this has escaped a lot of Canadians' attention and said it would be cruel and unusual to keep a Veltman, a Bissonnette, a Bernardo, a Picton from being able to apply for parole in their natural life. That is why the judge's hands are tied today. And when people say, well, maybe the parole board will see the terrorism thing in 25 years. Well, 25 years is a long time away, not so long for the Afzali family and their loved ones. And it still means that the Afsali family and their loved ones will have to drive out to some penitentiary, God knows where, in 25 years and say to the parole board, you can't seriously be thinking about this. Could he be declared a dangerous offender? I believe Paul Bernardo has that, has that and he, his, his chances for applying parole, for parole are slim to none, right? No, Paul Bernardo, and this is important. See, this is why this has escaped so much scrutiny. You ask a great, great question, Roger, because Paul Bernardo was declared a dangerous offender, but even under that regime, he can keep applying for parole. There's been no application here in this case. Look, between you and me, life means life. He's unlikely to ever be released, but we don't know what the world will look like in 25 years. And on a day where Picton's applying for parole, Bernardo does this to the French and Mahaffey families every couple of years. And now the Afzali family and their loved ones in 25 years will have to go through this. The Supreme Court has basically said, 
There's just nothing you can do in this country, no matter how evil or heinous, that prevents you in 25 years from applying to breathe the same air as you, me, and everybody watching us today. Okay, Ari, thank you as always for your insight. Thank you, Roger.